going to start at the very base. We're going to start with the uh, training the core, and then later down the road, each one of these lessons is going to build on top of each other. So you can just slowly and easily just focus on and take in all the stuff we learned from this week, and it's just going to be real slow because you guys got plenty of time. Because how old are y'all? How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Ten. Cool. So y'all are the perfect age to kind of get started, especially with this core training. We can really just a lot of the core training is just things like planks that you have to start out with um, because it's going to create, well, I'll, I'll get into it anyway. So a lot of things we're gonna start out with is planks and at this age, it's gonna be a lot of calisthenics and I'm gonna show y'all kind of how to engage that and you have to do the calisthenics and down the road as you get that core strength and you're strong and you're stable and you have proper movement patterns, then we can start getting into lifting weights. Um, so it's always a process, always a process. So we're gonna start with the scientific rationale Please don't blink out here. Gonna be some big words. I'm gonna go back and explain them. I just like to use the big words so that you're familiar with it. You know why you're doing it. Um, and especially down the road, if you do get an interest in it, it's only gonna help you that you know the words. Um, so basically the reason for core training is that individuals uh, will get chronic back pain, low back pain throughout their life uh, because of decreased activation of muscle groups, including the transverse abdominis, the obliques, the pelvic floor muscles, basically all this area, this core area, and then the deep erector spinae, and that's this area right here. So the whole time when you hear words like that, I'm going to be clarifying them for you, so just hang on for two seconds and I'll get them to you. Uh, so, as far as study support, role of core training in prevention of rehabilitation and lower back pain, core stabilization exercises resource size, activation, endurance, uh, yada yada blah blah blah, basically prevents low back pain, Programs that include specific core stabilization training tend to be more effective than therapy alone. So what this means is uh, a lot of times you'll just go in and it's just cookie cut uh, things to fix your low back pain because up to 80% of adult Americans are going to be affected by low back pain at some point in their time. So you guys are starting at the perfect time to try and ensure that maybe you could be in that 20%. And what it was basically saying is the more you work your core, the more you keep your two sides of your body, the front and the back, uh, working in unison, the better, better off you're going to be, the less injuries you're going to have. So if you don't use the previously mentioned muscle groups regularly, you will have low back pain at some point in your life, basically. Drawing and maneuver. So it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You're going to take this portion just below the belly button, and you're trying to just suck it in and bring it towards the spine. What this is going to do is it's going to trap air inside uh, of your stomach and keep your si and your uh, spine stabilized. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent you from getting too much side to side action, especially in things like deadlifts, cleans. Because if you're going side to side, one side's going to get overloaded. You're going to be in pain. A lot of other, a lot of other stuff. Again, pretty much the whole idea behind drawing it in is we want the spinal stiffness and we want improved intersegmental neuromuscular control. And what that means is, again, just trapping air or just having control of your body in the most part. Have you guys ever, when you started lifting weights, did the weight feel really light, but you couldn't control it? You know, like, have you ever done a bench press and, you know, maybe it's like, oh, this is light, but one arm's going up faster than the other. Has that ever happened to any of you in these classes? Okay, we got one guy, whether it's real or not, I appreciate you coming in with it. Um, so what's happening there is just you haven't trained what I was talking about with neuromuscular control. You haven't trained your body to have the proper movement patterns. So although the, white, the weight might be light to you, you don't, your body doesn't know how to actually lift it in unison together. So that's what doing all these things will help in starting with this. So all you have to do is just draw in the area, again below this, and it's going to activate your transverse abdominis, this portion of your ab, the top four, and it's going to trap in the air, it's going to compress joint, spinal stiffness, increase stability. Now there's one more method that you do in unison with it to kind of, one, you're drawing in to, to uh, keep the air into that cavity that we spoke about behind the front top four abs, and then two, you're going to flex, you're going to flex these, so it's like you're trying to, like you're trying to impress a grill at the beach or something, you know, you're trying to get all what little abs you have flexed out. So one, you draw in here to the spine and then two, he breaks it. And so that's how you start the lifts. And that's how you're going to avoid having that rounded back is drawing in, brace it. So say if we were doing the deadlifts or those cleans, you come down here, you'd be nice and loose, ready to go. You're not overthinking it when you're ready to go. Take a deep breath in to bring the air into there, trap it. And then 
and the whole way, it's like when you're pushing a car. You, if you were to push a car, would you be going? Would you get a hold of the car and just start trying to hyperventilate its way through, like going, or would you trap air and just and try to push it with everything you got? Which one would you think you did? I think I trap air. Good, and that's very good. Uh, at the very least, I know you're listening because that's basically all I've been saying this whole time. So, good call. Uh, and it's just like that. If you're trying to pick up a tire, what are you going to do? Just your natural instinct is going to be trap air. If you're in a bad situation, it's usually that's the natural instinct. So you go with it, but at the same time, usually at the end of the lift, you're going to be wanting to let the air out and kind of reset. At the end of every rep, there's going to be a reset point. So that is, so let's, um, let's go over this again. So in English, this means you're going to suck in your stomach, squeeze your glutes, your cheeks. So it's like you're trying to bring them together. So we're here, that's the first point. And then from there, I'm like a rock. You're, you're not gonna move me, you're not gonna move me, it doesn't hurt. So here we are, we got that. Um, and pretty much this is going to bring us to the full idea of focusing on your form over weight is what we're trying to do here. So let's take a second, everybody can pop up and let's, uh, let's get that practice. We'll start with you, what were we doing again? I'm gonna stop and ask you what we were doing just so you can be thinking about what we got going on. To, uh, anybody else can answer that too, because I don't want to just make him answer it. Uh, if anybody else feels it, we'll, we'll give it to you since that's a record. Uh, we're going to be traveling and, and. Anybody else got anything else to add to that? Anything, anything at all. So we're going to be trapped in the air. How are we going to be doing that? What are we going to be drawing in? Towards. Towards the spine. Good, 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 good. Squeezing. Squeezing our uh, glutes and our obliques. Good, perfect. Glutes, obliques, and really, all that was just extra stuff to just kind of get you uh, familiar familiarized with a few of the names of some of the core. Um, it's less important because basically all you really got to do is kind of feel it. It's not like you can go, okay, I got my transverse abdominis here. Let me also remember, oh, wait, I forgot my oblique. Usually they're going to all come together if you say flex your abs. You're going to get a flexed ab. So again, that was just more so I wanted to be able to tell you, but that was very good. I, 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 I liked how you did apply um, just what you had heard just now. So if you want to go ahead and start, who wants to go first? It's going to be real simple. It's nothing crazy. And then by the end of the class, we'll do a couple movements with a barbell or either dumbbells in which you're going to be practicing. But first, we're going to be doing this. We're going to start with you. We're going to come back to the other side. So let's go ahead and pop up. So again, one more time, let's have him here so he's not just, just stuck out in the open. What, what is he starting with? What is he starting with here? He's going to start suck, uh, take a deep breath, suck you in the air, and then squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your glutes. And, and then your tighten glutes. it. And now from there, I want you to hold all that, but I want you to try, instead of holding your breath, still breathe, but keep all that trapped because it's still possible. That's the one thing. A lot of people think I'm telling you that you need to hold your breath through the whole lift. No, I can get here, I'm nice, tight, and strong, and I'm going, and nothing is moving, nothing is changing, I'm still, and through the nose, out through the mouth, and it's, and it's tough, I mean, it, it's not supposed to be easy, nothing about lifting is supposed to be easy or comfortable, that's why everybody doesn't do it, so, <laughs> make sure you don't want to pass out over here, so how, how's it feel, do you have trouble breathing, alright, cool, so, on this next one, I want you to kind of point your toes out. Now I want you to squeeze your glutes. Start with that. Now suck it in. Now make. Now you're flexing. Now in through the nose, out through the mouth while making. And so here you see you're, you're just stiff. I can't move you. You're just stiff. You're good. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right, you're up. Go ahead. We'll go ahead and let you just jump through it. So uh, just talk me through what you're doing as you do it. Um, you're second in. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Squeezing your glutes. Okay. And flexing. Or, yep. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And another good way to kind of remember to squeeze your glutes is you got two functions for your glutes, these guys back here. One of them is to do this, and one of them is to cause your leg to do this. So if we want to give our glutes a chance to kind of do that without us even thinking, a good place to start would be one of its main functions, which is pointing your toes a little bit out because that's one of the functions. If you stand up right now, and this is part of one of the things I want to start teaching you guys is a mind-muscle connection. If everybody can stand up real quick, let's go ahead and do that right now. Start doing this. Just put your, bend your knee. 
do you feel that? Do you feel right through here how that's getting engaged? So that's why if we're doing a military press or a squat or anything else, we're gonna start with our heels in and our toes pointed out. Where, how far you bring it is up to you. Every one of you have different sizes, different shapes, so your hips and your feet placement's gonna be different. So from here, we just wanna make sure we got good even, we're comfortable, and so from there, we're a good place that it's already kind of engaged. And that's one of the biggest problems is a lot of adults, and then especially kids, because all you do is sit at school eight hours a day. And what's that's causing is the opposite of this. And so you're getting into this, you're doing this a lot all day, you know, when you're sitting, the teacher's boring, and you're just kinda, of, uh. So that's causing, that's actually causing you damage, and nobody's teaching you guys how to fix that. And that's ultimately what leads to 80% of Americans having low back pain because nobody has educated them on how to fix that. And so by doing this, you're gonna give yourself a fighting chance along with stretching, which in a couple weeks, we'll have another thing on that. I don't wanna start y'all with a boring core one and then not get to do anything the next week. We'll do stretching in a few weeks. I'll give y'all space in that. So uh, keep the toe, toes pointed out. And then from there, you're already feeling the outside through here kind of engaged. And all you gotta do is just give it the rest of the way. Get a squeeze. All right. Now we're drawing in from just below the navel at the belly button towards the spine. Trap the air and flex. And so when we're in there, it's the same thing right here. So say if I'm doing a squat, I'm gonna keep relating it back to other stuff. And so while you're holding it, whole time I'm talking, just kind of hold it. Focus on just really thinking about breathing and thinking about the muscles that you're engaged in that I'm talking about. So say, here's another one. We talk about military press. So in military press, you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be doing this right here. That's a major problem if you're not engaging your core. So how to engage your core, you bring it in there. Everything we talked about, this is the perfect stance where you guys are at right now to start this. So what we do here is we're going to have it from about the clavicle and we're going to go. And so to ensure that doesn't happen, it's just a straight punch up. And the whole time you need to learn how to still keep tight and still keep your glutes engaged. And that's what's gonna keep your back from arching and putting you in a compromised position and using a, like we talked about, the movement patterns, the neuromuscular inefficiency. If you're not doing that, then you're just gonna develop the wrong muscles and one side's gonna literally be shorter than the other. The other side, so if this side is like shortened right here, this side gets lengthened. And that's what puts you in a bad position to get into. Everybody wants to go ahead and have a seat. Uh, so the second portion of this, is what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to develop your own, this whole the whole thing, every time we do something, I'm gonna teach you how to develop your own programs because you guys are young enough that if you do have a love for this, there's no reason, I mean, I'm taking all this stuff straight from my uh, personal training book. It's just basic exercise science. So, I mean, you guys keep coming back. You're not gonna need to pay me for no reason. You can start drawing up your own programs. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't draw up others. You don't wanna get sued or anything. So <laughs> you're not certified. So uh, now what we're going to talk about with those two systems we did, um, they're the local. Uh, where's the? Let's see, sorry, I'm blanking here. I got so many words coming up. Um, so we got the local and the global stabilization systems, and the local core is activated when you do the drawing in. So we bring it back. So the local core is a set of muscles. Um, I'm not going to tell you because you're not going to remember, but it's a set of muscles that help you draw in. That's the local core stabilization. Now the global are the ones that help you brace. Again, not going to tell you all those. It's I've got the PDF if you want it. I'm going to have it posted somewhere. I can send it to your parents. I can send it to you. Just let me know if you want it so you can, can draw these up later or you can read it up and try to uh, learn it. So we talked about two of the three movement systems involved in the core. The third one is, are the core systems. So the third one is the movement system and this includes the spine, pelvis, extremities uh, such as uh, latus smith dorsi, hip flexors, hamstrings, and quads. So that's your latus smith dorsi, your lats right there, this little just a little slab. Uh, this is the hip flexors area it's talking about. Um, this is your hamstrings and this is your quads. So these are all your movements and what this is going to go on to basically say is you want to build a strong core. You want to do those first before you do any kind of movement system work at all and so that would be after what I just pointed out to you that would be anything from deadlift squats anything before you get into that you need to build a strong core through training dog learning how to uh, brace and do the drawing and maneuver you learn those two things and each session or each stage takes about four weeks and we're gonna get to that in a second so if you don't do that, if you go straight to movement systems, start doing things like squats, deadlifts, uh, cleans, before you've learned how to engage your core, 
that's like building a house without any kind of concrete slab. It's gonna it's just it's gonna be in balance. You're gonna be sinking in the ground and heavier parts. Same exact thing for the body. You're gonna be end up looking like the hunchback of Notre Dame. You're gonna be you know walking around like this. Girls don't want to see that. Um, so the point of this is everything I told you. So stage one is uh, the core stabilization training. And it's just like we talked about, these exercises involve little motion through this pelvis or spine. So there's not gonna be any of this. It's gonna be, um, you know, just for four weeks, if you're wanting to do it good or, or get a good start, it's just a bunch of things like planks, just something that works on um, contracting those two systems I was talking about, the local and the global. That's all you're focused on for the first four weeks. So just doing a bunch of planks, um, let's see. And the other goal, yeah, shoot, lost it. Oh no, okay. All right, so here, again, are some of the exercises you can do. You kind of look at that. So I don't know what you guys are doing nowadays as far as internet, but I can get you these PDFs, like I said, so you can pull these and do them at home. A lot of these, as you can see, very easy to do by yourself at home. And you do them for four weeks and you're, going to be, especially at your guys' age, you're going to be a lot more efficient. It might be, basically what I'm saying, it might be, it may or may not be quicker than four weeks just because y'all got, got young genetics. When you're in that age of 12 to, you know, 20, just, you can, you can do, you can work out all day and, and there's no problems, but um, I would still recommend probably get 48 hours of rest before doing the same muscle group just to, uh, to cover myself here. So the second stage is the core strength. This is where we start involving more things like side-to-side -side movements that are going to use the obliques and the serratus. Have you ever seen those guys who are just really jacked and have like that little rib look right here and it goes down? That's the serratus. And so that's uh, just again, those, those all get more involved when you start using the extremities. So that's what stage two will be, was using the extremities, going side-to-side. -side. It's gonna be less of, less of planks and more so of crunches and toe, uh, legs to chest, things like that. Makes sense. Does anybody have anything so far? Um, any questions? Like for real, if you think of anything and you're like, I have no idea what he was talking about there, stop me, raise your hand, ask me to clarify it if I haven't already. I have no problem. That's what we're here for. Here for you guys. All right. So here's a bunch of the core strength again. So you can see. So you remember we saw the first one. What was it mostly? It was just a lot of just keeping yourself stabilized, straight back, and getting the core. So you see in this one, there's a lot more movement. See, so we got we got sit ups, hands in the air. You got um, this one right there. You can work in your lower back, uh, and this one works like I said, the side to side movement. So that's your stage two. Um, you know what I'm gonna do actually, since there's just three of y'all. Before y'all get out of here today, I'm gonna go talk to Cody. I'm gonna get a printed version. I'll get one for you and your brother, just so I mean y'all live together. I'll share. I'll get one for you. Um, let's see. So applying this, you, oh, whoops, I put stage two on this. So uh, the last stage is stage three. This is the power stage. So now we worked on, we worked on stabilize, stabilizing, we built our foundation. Now we started uh, second stage, we started building on top of that, we started getting strength. We started adding in things that work, the quads, uh, different movements outside of that. So this third stage is where we're gonna work on power. This is where you're gonna be working on trying to hit goals of, you know, like, dunking, doing this, doing that, explosive movements. So a lot of what this is gonna be is just chest passes with a medicine ball, uh, that overhead, yeah, Josh probably had y'all do that in some classes where you like just throw a medicine ball up in the air and whatnot. That's what these are, those are power exercises. Uh, and again, I can show you, and see we got a lot of them here. And these are just a few examples. There's a ton of exercises for all these. And you can really, once you start learning like I told you, each one of these muscles and what they do individually, you can really start making up your own workouts because they all have a function. You just have to figure those out and that's how you know how to do them. Any questions? Any questions? Those are the three places we go and how long do we spend in each of them? It's a lot of information, so I know I'm not, not gonna be upset. It's four weeks, four weeks in each of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, fig I figured you know, you just popped it up. You got no notes to reference. I'm not gonna, not gonna be upset if you don't get it. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll take a look here. So this is how you build your system. So these are basically all the variables you're gonna need. First four weeks were like we've said several times, you're working stabilization. You're just learning how to engage your core. These exercises will be 
core stabilizations, you're going to have one to four exercises, really just depending on how quick and how strong you want to get. And this is all needs to be coupled with just eat all day. You guys are young enough. Once uh, you just need to get stronger, uh, of course, it would be safer to get on a plan that is specified to you. But you guys are going to be all right, especially if you stay active. Uh, so we're going to stay in one to four sets, 12 to 20 reps. On a 4 2 1 tempo. Now, what does that mean? What is a 4 2 1 tempo? That's a, you've got a concentric portion, eccentric, and a isometric. And what that is in English is basically, you know, when you do this, you're contracting. You're contracting the muscle. And that's, there's a portion on that on basically every single lift. And so when you bring it back down, that's the negative. So that's your muscles using themselves to control it. And so you, you guys remember in class, I'm always telling y'all, slow and control. This is why, because of these tempos. There's different things. You can work the muscles different ways by more than just adding weight. And that's kind of what I'm trying to open your guys, your, your eyes to. That you can, what you can do is you can do tempo, you can do it slower, you can do the rest intervals, the number of exercises, your sets, your reps. And each one of these, there's a, there's a set. See, we've got sets, set sets there. As long as you stay in there in those sets and rep ranges, you're performing right. Um, and the whole idea is that behind that too is uh, because this whole basic idea is used on building any kind of workout program. And the idea behind that is that we're going to be attacking different energy systems, different adaptations. Because um, you know the food you eat, right? Each one of those work to a different energy system to fuel your body to do something different. Like say fats, if you're a long distance runner, you're going to want to have a lot of fat because that's going to be like your long, long distance energy system runs off of fat. And then your short explosive is going to be like, like carbs, like spaghetti and whatnot. So if you're doing a lot of weightlifting, you're only going to be working out for like an hour tops. That's your, those guys usually have a lot more carbs and fat. So that's again, we're getting to it. And that's what, that's basically how you break it up. I'm still just throwing it past you guys. Um, I don't expect you guys to leave here being experts. Every week that you do come, I'm just going to keep sprinkling in little things like that until eventually it sticks. At some point, it's going to stick. When you see these rep ranges over and over, if you just put it in one week at a time, you know, try to do a little more here and there, take the initiative, take some of these lingos, go on to YouTube to try and, like, you know, compare it to other people's knowledge because there's more than one way to skin a cat. There are these basic scientific laws but you can come up with your own ways of how you enjoy working out. You don't have to do what other people tell you is cool. Find your own ways that you enjoy working out. This is just a way to keep you safe and keep you from getting low back pain, and it's the perfect place to start.